How are you doing, sir? I'm good. Um, uh, first, let me start by saying congratulations on the movie. Thank uh, you. It is fantastic. It's a blast. Uh, you make it look so easy directing this, but the the visuals and the action and the story, it. I know how hard this must have been. At, w at what point were you ready to walk off set and say, F it, I'm out? <laughs> oh, which time? Which one? Well, I mean, one of the things I wanted to do that was different than the first movie was really open it up and make San Francisco more of a character in the movie. So we shot a lot in San Francisco, which was tough because we weren't sure they were gonna allow us access. They have a long history of from Bullet, What's Up Doc, all these movies of people doing chases in the city and destroying public, public property. You can still see like chunks of concrete missing from stunts they did in Bogdanovich's What's Up Doc. Um, so once we got permission to use San Francisco, it was really sort of mapping out this, this very intricate chase that took specific advantage of the city itself, the elevation changes, um, some of the specific landmarks. Going and shooting that stuff, shooting the digital elements, you know, all the shrinking and growing stuff, it was really complicated. But the whole mantra the whole time was, I want this to feel like I'm walking around in San Francisco and I turn my head and there's this insane chase happening, you know, a block down the street. Like, what is it really? It has to be as photorealistic as possible. Uh, explain to people what the Fraser lens is. Fraser lens is a lens that became our go-to lens for any of the stuff with Ant-Man or with Wasp when they're shrunken down. Um, and it's a really specific lens. It needs a lot of light, but it's able to capture uh, real-world environments, really small environments with real uh, incredible detail and color. And we use those lenses, you know, the motion picture lenses and also some still lenses to capture, you know, real world environments so that it can really make it come to life for an audience and make it feel like, you know, they've shrunken down. Completely. Uh, uh, I asked you this in the first movie, I'll ask you again. Uh, how long was your first cut compared to the finished film? First cut on this one was, you know, I'm, I'm very vocal about the Ant-Man movies being under two hours. It feels right because they're comedic and there's chase stuff and there's, you know, it, there's a point of exhaustion you can reach with a pace like that, and it feels right for our movies. The first cut, I think, the director's assembly of this was probably two, two and a half, two forty, something like that. Now, but that's with everything. That, in it. Yeah, exactly. That's with literally like the like breath in every scene. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. what was the first cut that you had? They were like, "Oh, this is pretty good." I think my director's cut was probably two hours and sixteen minutes. I still knew there was fat in it. And, you know, it's just constant whittling down. But that's just the organic process on any movie, right? It's got, there's a point where a scene is like, ah, it's good, but it's not singing yet. And you find when you take out little things, even things that you love, moments that are just great, and at one point you couldn't imagine it being out of the movie. Once you take that thing out, the rest of it sings. So it's really just this exercise in compression. So do you think it's like five or ten minutes of deleted scenes on the Blu-ray, or is it... Longer. I think there will be. No, I think probably five to ten, because there's stuff that you do that's, you know, well, this scene is good, but it's a repeated beat of this other thing, and this thing that's in the movie is way better, so no one needs to see that version. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some stuff in the Quantum Realm. There's some, definitely some stuff with uh, Walton Goggins. There's maybe a little more Quantum Realm stuff that you'll see on the Blu-ray. I'm very curious. Some really fun stuff. Um, it's interesting, because cutting out visual effects is expensive. It is, and it's one of the amazing things at Marvel, which, we, you know, we can sort of, even if something is maybe, uh, I don't know if that's going to be in the movie, they'll continue to progress it visual effects-wise. One, because we want to see it and see, like, does it earn its place in the movie? And, other, and the other reason is, like, well, it'll be a great thing on the, on the Blu-ray. Sure. You know, yeah. Um, who gave you the best notes in a friends and family screening and why? Well, Marvel has sort of their so-called parliament. You know, it's guys like uh, Stephen Broussard, Brad Winderbaum, all these guys who, you know, uh, who have been at Marvel and kind of like aren't involved in your movie directly, but then will come in and sort of they'll have sort of Marvel-esque notes and then uh, they'll have notes that are just sort of creative notes. And it's really, really, um, it's nice for me as a director to have that perspective. I really value, I have on all my movies audience screenings because particularly in a comedy, you know, you can you can adjust a laugh that maybe is a medium laugh and go in and editorially make it a giant laugh or a rolling laugh or if it's just not none of those things work and it's no laugh it goes out of the movie they're really valuable to me so who gives the most i think the audience gives me the the most valuable notes well i'm curious because obviously the editing process is the final rewrite so i'm just curious yeah. what uh was there like a key note that you missed 
that you showed the movie and you're like, oh my God, that's so obvious. There are always little things. I'm trying to think about um, in terms of Wasp. In these movies, it's always, there was one early, early screening where uh, someone said, wait, so is her name the Wasp? Because rarely, you know, these aren't movies where it's like, okay, Wasp, let's go. Sure. You know, you just sort of know that she's Wasp. And there are little things where you have to sort of like, oh, maybe we should seed in this one little moment. You can't ever take anything for granted that someone remembers something from the first movie or the second one. Um, so it's always tricky. It's always things that you don't expect. Um, I, I'm out of time, but I want to ask you one last thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm an ass. Uh, this is the first movie, first Marvel movie, that has the female lead, like, in the title. Yes. And that's a really big deal. Uh, and if you could just talk about that. Well, it's, it's one of the most exciting things to me that Ant-Man and Wasp has the name of the female hero in, in the title of the movie. Um, you know, we ended the last movie with Hope seeing the suit and saying it's about damn time, and of course it's, it's past time. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's great for, and rewarding for me for two reasons. One, you know, from issue number one of the Avengers, Ant-Man and Wasp are a team, right? They're just in the comics, they are a duo. Um, and I thought that would be something really fun to explore in this movie is what does this modern Ant-Man and Wasp duo feel like? Because Hope is a fully formed hero in this movie. And I think the big question is, in her mind, do I need a partner? Do I need Scott? I'm all in. He seems to be having some uh, work-life balance issues, you know, because the couple times Scott has put on the suit in Ant-Man 1 and in Civil War, it's, it's brought him some serious problems. And it's jeopardized his relationship with his daughter. So that, that seemed like fertile ground to play with. But for me, Evangeline and I, in script phase and through shooting and on, talked a lot about how this character was going to move, uh, how she was going to react to things, what her whole, uh, just, just as a character, wanting her to be a dimensionalized character. And also I think that, you know, when you really look at Ant-Man and the Wasp, Wasp is probably a little better at her job than Ant-Man is. <laughs> Completely, and it shows in the movie. Yeah. Thank you so much.